Hi, I'm Sheriff Joe Lapinto, and you are watching the New Orleans Talk Network. This is Congressman Cedric Richmond, and you're watching the New Orleans Talk Network. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best of literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. Dale, listen, listen. I hear you've been talking, man. I hear you've been talking. When you see me down here in the Big Easy with the whole 504 behind me, it's on, Chef Rome. Hey, New Orleans, get ready for the NOLA versus Carolina chef battle. I'll be your host boy, Wild Wayne. It's going down Saturday, December 29th, 4 to 7 p.m. It's going to be between Chef Jerome Brown, as seen on the Food Network, and Chef Wendell Randall, known as Chef Dell 504. It'll be at the Treme Hideaway, 1234 North Claiborne, right off of Esplanade. You can get VIP and regular tickets at eventbrite.com. Sponsored by Piazza seafood Rouse's market exquisite diamond transportation and window vacation resorts for more info call 504 What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I am back, and I know the studio looks a little bit different, and I am standing behind it. I'm not cooking. I cook, but I'm not cooking. This is for the chefs who are in the house. Many of you have heard me for the last probably month and a half talking about the NOLA versus Carolina chef battle. Well, it's about to be on and popping right here. We are starting... Well, you know, I'm not even going to say we're starting the battle a little bit early. We're going to meet the chefs tonight. They're going to actually work together for the first time in history and probably the last time because they're about ready to go head to head. So right now we have Chef Dell 504. Come on in. <laughs> How y'all doing, oh. good people? Doctor. Okay, there you go. All right, so Chef Dell 504, what do you have here? What's going on? We got chicken here. We're going to do a, a, a vodka chicken pasta so um okay getting our set up on I'm, I'm actually working together with chef rome today uh trying to be hospitable for for a little bit yeah this is you know you have to welcome him to your city before you start trying to fight with him right, right. <laughs> okay so this is chef rome hey chef rome what's going on lady how you doing all is well. Welcome All is to well. New Orleans. Yeah, I, I feel the welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been threatened more times a day than I have in the last five years. What? Not here in this city. Oh, yeah, right in this city. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, this is Chef Rome, everybody. So we have Chef Rome, we have Chef Dell, and then we have a few people in the studio audience. Let's hear it for these two chefs. <laughs> 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 okay, so now what's going on? Um, we talked about a little. You said it's some vodka chicken. Vodka chicken. That sounds delicious. Yeah, vodka's yeah. always good. Yeah, we're gonna make a quick vodka sauce in the pan, okay. right? So we're gonna serve it over a thin spaghetti, kind of like angel hair, mm -hmm. but a little bit thicker, just a little bit, just to, it saves time on cooking, right? Okay. So we figured we'd make a one pot dish, toss in some spinach with some greenery, mm -hmm. and that'll get, actually give it that boost of color that it needs, right? Just to kind of mm. accent and break it up. So. That sounds delicious. I'm fighting with a pasta. Well, you can't fight already. Pasta we package. just started. Hey. 
Anybody can get it. He <laughs> might as well. He might as well get comfortable with the fight. Because it's coming to him. Okay, okay. Well, before we start actually doing all this mess talking that I know you guys have been doing for the last month, <coughs> let's get to know both of you, first of all. So, um, we'll start with the guest. You know, your guest to New Orleans. So, we'll go ahead and start with you. So, all right. you've been cooking since you were a child. Yeah, age seven. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, because you have been on the show before. Mm-hmm. You said that the first thing you tried to cook was pancakes. That's right. That's I, right. I That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That was one of those mornings where you know, when you have kids, they act like they have a job, so they get up extra, extra early. Mm. I was that kid. <laughs> so I saw her make pancakes the day before. So that next morning, I got up and tried to emulate everything I saw her doing. Okay. And I burnt pancakes up all morning long. Mm. All of them morning long. So she came in there and she said, turn the flame down. It's too hot. And so she, since she didn't tap my behind up for messing with her stove at the age of seven, I kept cooking. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now, you've been cooking since a child as well. A little bit older than seven. I would say probably in my early teens. So that's uh, about two years now. Right. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was Starting a big, already. Right. I was a big fan of my older brother, and so I used to follow behind him in the kitchen. So he just did it for recreational, but... Mm. Uh, being in the kitchen, it really, you know, I took a love to it. And so I said, you know what, let me try and see if I can make a career out of this. So I went to culinary school. And from there, you know, I've been working all over in kitchens. And so now I'm just trying to do this personal chef thing. And, uh, you know, I'm over here with Chef Rome. And we about to get it in. Now, one thing you both have in common. Pass the butter. <coughs> Who wants the butter? Okay. One thing that you both have in common is that you were both army cooks yeah yeah i went in the army as a cook mm -hmm. thought it was going to be the easiest job i could find and found <laughs> out real quick it's the toughest job that you can have in the military <laughs> other than an mp or somebody working in the hospital so absolutely Best job in the Wait, how much butter did you use uh about three tablespoons about three tablespoons mm -hmm. of butter okay yeah yeah about three tablespoons of butter mm. you know I'm going to pull a Paula Dean today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Paula Dean does use some butter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, how long did you spend in the Army? I was in six and a half years. Okay. And how long did you spend in the Army? Now, before I say how long I've been in, you know, back when he was in the Army, they were cooks. <laughs> I'm a food service specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way they make food service specialists sound like really fancy. Mm -hmm. Number one, it really is fancy. <laughs> and number two, I've been in right at six and a half years also, but it was recent years mm -hmm. versus uh, ancient Why you keep years. referring uh, to recent and ancient, man? I'm just saying, you know, young. See, Vibrant. this is how the oh, battle started right here. You know, it's all good. Running off at the mouth. <laughs> didn't think I was going to actually show up. Mm. And now here I am in New Orleans. Mm. I ain't running. Uh, you, can't, you can't. I got the keys. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you can't run. Okay. I, I, I you can run, but you can't hide anyway. <laughs> you can't I hide. I don't own a pair of running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell, tell me something. It looks like, um, did you... Cut the, cut the, um, yeah, what we chicken? did was we trimmed the extra fat. These are thighs, okay. boneless, skinless thighs. Okay. So what we did was we cut the, um, the extra fat off of it. We mm -hmm. left a little bit for that flavor, right? But we're just going to saute this up real quick, turn it over one time, and then we'll begin to build it, build the sauce right there in the pan, mm. add everything into it, and you get all the marriage of those wonderful flavors coming together at one time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now how long should you cook the chicken on each side? So because because of the the weight of these, which they're, they're very thin, mm -hmm. right? You can go three to three and a half minutes on each side. Remember, it's going to continue to cook as we're building the sauce anyway. Right. So it's actually going to cook longer than that. But we're going to let it go for about three minutes on one side. Mm -hmm. Then we'll turn it over, right? And then begin to build the sauce. Okay. Now one thing I I don't think I've ever done was actually cook the chicken in butter. Usually I'll use like olive oil or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you use olive oil? Or yeah, is absolutely. Better? Well, I mean, sometimes most of the time we use olive oil and butter together. Mm -hmm. The olive oil is heart healthy, and um, and but it has a different burn point. It'll actually raise the burn point of that butter. The butter will give the chicken more flavor. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So it becomes the basis of the sauce. Now. 
you're using chicken thighs. Right. Um, a lot of times people would have probably thought chicken breasts, but mm -hmm. are thighs the better way to go with this? I like the thighs. I think Wendell said he liked the, like thighs, the thighs just well. because they're more flavorful. Yeah, the dog meat has a little extra flavor. It's juicier. You know, you'd have those thighs and you cook them too long and they get real dry unless you braise them or uh, cook them in a liquid. Mm -hmm. But a thigh will actually um, produce more juices. Right? You see, we just had that little bit of butter and so it's getting, you're seeing more juice. Right, in the right. And I think the, uh, the thighs have a little more flavor. Okay. Now, he referenced about overcooking breasts, but for chefs like myself, unlike him, we don't overcook the breasts, right? <laughs> what we'll do, we'll let it go slightly, especially knowing that we're going to cook it longer, right? We'll, we'll, that's how we do. That's what we do. As you can see, these two are going to mess talk. So, it doesn't really matter. You know, I'm looking out for the people out there in the TV audience, but this guy over here just throwing the shots back over here. But it's, it's all good. <laughs> That was, that was a valid point by Chef Rome, and I, I, I commend him on that. <laughs> you know. well, Chef Del, now with spaghetti, some people like to throw it against the wall to see if it's ready. What's a better way to make sure that the spaghetti's ready? Eat it. <laughs> Just you take know. a piece and chew it. Right. Just take a piece and chew it and see if it's done. Um, a lot of people like to throw some oil in their, um, in their pasta water. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I didn't because uh, oil and oil and water don't mix and right. so most of the time when you put your oil in there it's just floating around everywhere so it's basically a waste it's a waste so what i would do what i do when i actually strain the pasta then i mix the oil with it so it can uh separate itself from each uh noodle gotcha gotcha okay so, so, as, so as you see, we've already we, we turned these over. Okay. Right now, in a moment, we're gonna take that wonderful vodka and begin to deglaze the pan. Does and it that, matter what type of vodka? Um, I say use a good vodka. Like we're using what Tito's today. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to give them a free commercial or nothing, but <laughs> not only does it taste good, but it, it, I mean, you don't want to use a cheap vodka. Right. right? If you're gonna add alcohol to anything that you're preparing, use a good alcohol. Because so, um, the reason I ask that question is because some people may say it's a waste to use my good vodka on this. So I'm just going to find a really cheap vodka to use. And I say to that, you are what you eat. Right. All right. <laughs> okay. You're going in your system. That's Absolutely true. right. That's true. Absolutely. So this will continue to saute. Okay. He's one who's going to hand me this vodka. Mm-hmm. What we need is a couple of shot glasses. Right. I was about to say, I should have brought my shot glasses if I had known we were going to do this. Right. So we're going to pull this off the eye because we're adding you don't alcohol want it to and, and well, it, it, it has the proclivity to ignite. Oh. So we always pull the um, skillet from the eye. Okay. Is that enough vodka for you? <laughs> Y'all want some more? <laughs> Sip, sip, give, sip, sip, give. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have our sauce. Did y'all make the sauce or? Yeah, so Wendell okay. made a tomato sauce. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. A la Chef Boyardee, I think. <gasps> no, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. He, he, I'm just messing. He made he made a sauce. He made a tomato sauce earlier. Okay. Save some time, but we use some ripe plum tomatoes straight off the vine, mm -hmm. right? And basically just kind of peel those down and, and, and let that sauce reduce and cook it, boil down okay. in its own natural flavors. Nice. And then strain it so you get that nice, smooth texture. All right? Mmm. So, so as you can see. It's making a nice little. Absolutely. Yeah. So it deglazed the bottom of the pan. So mm -hmm. all of those brownings that was on the bottom from, from what we turned over, now all of that flavor is not I lost. I actually smell the vodka. Do y'all smell it? Right. <laughs> oh wow! And another key thing, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta make sure that you don't burn the bottom of the pan. Yes. So when you deglaze, and you want to deglaze charcoal and exactly. foolishness. That's why I was trying to watch him while he was. Doing <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so um, as you can see, it's about to get real in here. So we're gonna take a quick break, and when we get back, we're gonna put <laughs> all of this together, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about that Nola versus Carolina chef battle that's coming up. Saturday. We don't want you to miss this. So we are here. This is your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. This is my boy, Chef Dell 504. This is my other boy, Chef Jerome Brown. 
<laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Jealous, man. Jealous. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe while we're gone. <laughs> Let everybody know what's going on because it's getting real in here. We'll be right back. Dale, listen, listen. I hear you've been talking, man. I hear you've been talking. When you see me down here in the Big Easy with the whole 504 behind me, it's on, Chef Rome. Hey, New Orleans, get ready for the NOLA versus Carolina chef battle. I'll be your host boy, Wild Wayne. It's going down Saturday, December 29th, 4 to 7 p.m. It's going to be between Chef Jerome Brown, as seen on the Food Network, and Chef Wendell Randall, known as Chef Dale 504. It'll be at the Treme Hideaway, 1234 North Claiborne, right off of Esplanade. You can get VIP and regular tickets at eventbrite.com, sponsored by P.I. As a seafood, Rouse's Market, Exquisite Diamond Transportation, and Winter Vacation Resorts. For more info, call 504 5894. Oh, how the time flies. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between all to bring you the best of literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. Oh, how the time flies. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. What it do, y'all? It's DJ Slick Daddy from the Live Line. Here to tell you about the hottest ball in the West Bank after Dark Sports 4, 419 LaCarco Boulevard in Gretna. Come check us out on Monday for Steak and Oyster Night. Thursday, free seafood night. Friday, three for one happy hour. Saturdays, ladies night and always open for parties. And then Sunday, Saint Sunday, Old but Goody Sunday. Come find out what is hidden for at After Dark Sports Bar, 419 LaPelco Boulevard in Gretna. Doors open at 6, 12 p.m. on Sundays. After Dark is a non-smoking atmosphere. Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, DJ Slick Daddy. This DJ Slick 504. And of course, I'm your girl, Black Coco. Tune into the Live Line, New Orleans Talk Network, every Tuesday, 7 to 8.30, with all the trending topics. And you can also check out my mix, DJ Slick Mix for 1 and 2. And of course, check out Coco's Sex Tips of the Week. And hashtag TTBF. That's that bullshit. It's the Live Line, New Orleans Talk Network, Tuesday, 7 to 8.30. We're always live. Let's go. Hmm. What it do, y'all? It's DJ Slick Daddy from the lab. I'm just saying. I'm having, I'm having a love affair with food right now. Are we back? We are, we are back. And they, you guys need to see this. <laughs> he just put the cherry tomatoes Mm -hmm. And with the chicken, right? That's been deglazing in the vodka. So now, we're gonna add a little spinach. Mm -hmm. And oh it's gonna cook down so much, so it actually may look like we have too much. But we're gonna add all of that. But this is a nice size hungry. pan. Yeah, this right. is a nice size skillet. When you have those one pot meals, you really do want to make sure that you have enough room. Number one, you don't want to overcrowd what you're preparing. Mm -hmm. okay. So you want to have space. Okay. That way you get that nice even cooking. Mmm. So we have this tossed in, right? We want that flavor to get into the spinach yes. as well. So now that that's already begun to cook down a little bit, we can actually go ahead and add <laughs> the tomato sauce. Girl, just come on over. Come just on. come on over. <laughs> tomato sauce. Our beautiful host. Our this is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is our sponsor, Rachel from Piazza Seafood. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just put it. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's oh, going to continue goodness. to cook. Okay. All right. So you have this rich color here, right? 
almost like a Florentine. And just like you said, the spinach is um, is cooking down, so it's not as much as it looked like before. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So now we'll add some cream. Okay. And then Wendell's going to add the pasta and plate it up. And we'll go from there. Now, plating is very important. You've talked a lot about plating. You said there are people out there who may be great cooks, but if you don't have the plating, it's you, it's almost a waste because people like to eat with their eyes. Well, yeah, you're right. You, you eat with your eyes, and you want the food that you eat. You want it to look nice when it's presented. And so sometimes that take away from the value of the meal because mm -hmm. the presentation isn't there, the atmosphere right. isn't there. And, and things like that. So if you can go, you know, out to a restaurant and the ambiance is there yes. and the, the, uh, the plating is there and everything is around you, you actually, you know, impressing the person that you're with and all mm -hmm. of these different things and all of these factors come into your, the, the value of your meal. Yes. You know, so if you go somewhere and get a meal out of a styrofoam clamshell, you know, you're not <laughs> looking, you don't see the value in that. But if you, you know, you have all of those components, you know, it could be something special absolutely now what is, what's what is one key to plating i mean how do you make how do you, what gives you the skill for plating well there's a bunch of there's a bunch of characteristics of uh, of plating you have um color do you want to switch places uh, yeah yeah you have color you have mm -hmm. um you have color texture height um you know your plate choice and, uh, mm -hmm. so it's a bunch of different uh, aspects to plating to, to make it, you know. To make it what it is. Pretty awesome, yes. Okay. So, All right, so now you've just finished the spaghetti, so go ahead and talk us through what you're about to do here. I'm about to take my tongs. <laughs> I'm about to taste. <laughs> <laughs> and spin them on the, um, on the plate. You know, I want to get a bunch of them. Not a bunch, but I want to get a Yeah, you want to get a good amount. Right. Pick them up. You owe it to yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, while he's doing this, Rome, why did you put um, the cream in the sauce? Because a lot of times we just see a red sauce, but what? How did? How is it different with the cream? So what the cream did was bring it some balance. Okay. All right. It brought it the balance that it needed to round out the uh, the actual uh, vodka sauce, uh -huh. which, which is what we made, and. It gives it that smooth finish, that velvety finish. And if we wanted to give it some shine, then we would go back and we add like really cold butter. Oh. And that would that would handle that. So so I think it needs a, just a little bit more seasoning. And then he could finish plating it up. All right. Let's go with this. Since we're in New Orleans, let's do, right. the, do the Tonys, right? Yeah, that Tonys. Take the shot. Wow. Yeah. See, that's why he can't get... That's but see, he, I, I, like see, the, I like how he requested two <clears throat> cups instead of three. There's three of us up here. Yeah, but you understand mm -hmm. something about this well, whole I'm thing. Gonna, he was referring what? to burning stuff earlier. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I got to can't drink and cook the same time. <laughs> I get wine. He get vodka. <laughs> Showtime. <laughs> Okay, so we do have a comment here. Tracy Powell, she says, balance is the key. It will add flavor. Tracy sounds like she knows what she's talking about. Tracy, where you from? Where's that Tracy lives in Gulfport. In oh, I cut it. She what lives you know in Gulfport. What you know about Gulfport? I love Gulfport. Gulfport, Mississippi? Yes. Down there and get that old big old crawfish. Mm-hmm. Go to the casino down close to Biloxi. Oh, yeah, you know a little yeah. something about Gulfport. A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I like how you're doing this. You're not just <clears throat> pouring it on there. You're actually setting it on. Oh, no. Yeah. So you want to get, like I said, we want to get some height. Mm-hmm. So I want to knock that off. Yeah. And so then we're going to take maybe a, um, a ladle, spoon, or something like that. And you want to drizzle it over the top. Mm. Can y'all see this? I hope you guys can see this. He, he, he played it pretty well for somebody who's not a pro yet. Right. <laughs> he did all right. So I, you know, I had to do a simple plate because I, I don't want to use all of my tools right now. What, one more? You know, I, yeah, I got to take that one, that one other tool in the, in the box. But that we have me. Simple. Beautiful. Bon and appetit. That, and you guys started this 
right when we start, just before we started the show, really. Yeah, yeah. So that means that you can eat good food and it can be fancy, it can be beautiful, and it doesn't have to take all night to do it. In this day and time, you know, America has become such a, a microwave society, I call it. Everything has to be now. Yes. This is the reason why we eat so poorly because we go to the fast food because we want the convenience of right now. Yes. But I think when you, when you, Actually take the time to just look at different recipes mm -hmm. that works well for yourself or your family or whoever. You don't have to slave over the kitchen all day long. And that was one of the things about preparing this particular dish is that it was quick, simple, easy. And it's going to feed all these people. You see, what y'all don't know is I'm serious. This is not just for TV purposes. About I got to the studio at 630. I said, are you guys going to cook something? And they looked at each other and said, I guess we could. So they ran out. <laughs> They got this, they laid it out, and they did this. And they actually literally started cooking this right when the show started. So that's how simple this can be. And we do have a question yes. from Mr. Rufus, Rufus Davison. Okay. He asked, how do you determine the amount of food to plate? Is it based on the eater's size or their hunger? <laughs> so both. Uh, but um, it depends. So if you if you want to look at a more healthy approach mm -hmm. to plating in terms of the amount, um, I think the Food and Drug Administration have put it out where whatever the pits fits in the palm of your hand, that's mm -hmm. a proper serving for your body. Right. If you're looking about if you if you're thinking about proper amounts so um but then there's always the suggestive amount that come on the back of everything whether it's a quarter of a cup yes. for for rice or a half a cup for vegetables or four to six ounces of a protein mm -hmm. so that's kind of the the different guidelines but then if it's sunday and we can already watch football yep right we might pile it up a little bit more because we don't plan on <laughs> getting up no time soon. <laughs> and then another factor, how much this meal going to cost? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's exactly true. Right. That's true. Did you put in on this meal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it depends on the cost. How much you paying for this meal? You know? Well, we do have a few studio guests. And y'all want to taste this, don't y'all? Yeah. There you go. We want you to taste first. I get to taste first, though. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh my goodness. First of all, this chicken is tender. This is a plastic fork. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just going to put us on blast. Uh, no, I'm doing that for a it's reason. Okay. It's a real plate. You can't let it's us be great. It's a real plate. You can't let us be great today? Wow. All right. I'm out of here. This is, this is cheap fork. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I'm doing with this cheap fork. Wow. Mm. 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 Y'all got to get your own plate. Mm. <laughs> this is good. All right. I'm hoping I remember all of this so I can cook this myself. But in the meantime, <laughs> I have another question. First of all, David Bennett says this would be better based upon his hunger, not his, not his size. Well, gotcha. <laughs> David, when you're buying your food and you're spending your money, it can be whatever you want it to be. Right. Oh, and Tracy said... That you're using quotes from the FDA so you know what you're talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I told him he messing with a real pro. You know what? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure if this was written correctly, but Mark wanted to know how long it takes to look about it. Probably how long it took to cook. Yeah. How long does it take? What time is it? Mm-hmm. Well, this was, a, this right. was, I mean, honestly, this was like a 20-minute meal. Yeah. Right? 20 mm -hmm. to 30 minutes tops um, from, from the stove to the plate. So this was a really, really quick meal. As, as Rhonda um, already mentioned, that from the time she got here and we made the decision to cook, bam, we got it done. It was only about 20 minutes. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yeah. Dinner. I was going to go home and eat some um, jerk chicken. Sorry, baby. But... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have nobody running after us because you fed my woman. <laughs> no, more like, did she bring any home? <laughs> so, one of the things we were good on this was some mm -hmm. um, Parmesan cheese. Mm. We could have topped that off with some Parmesan cheese. Fresh Parmesan cheese. Oh, man, you know. Not just stuff in the green can. I mean, if that's all mm. you got. Mm -mm, no, fresh. Okay, all right. Yeah. Fresh it is. <laughs> fresh it is. <laughs> all right, so we have a few minutes before we go to our next break. Um, how did you two meet? How did we meet? We met on this show. I was a viewing, uh, a viewer, a couple, 
I don't know how long. I was minding my own business, <laughs> and somewhere or another, a challenge. Can they come from miles around just like him? Number one, they didn't ask <laughs> where this challenge come from. They asked how I met you. That's that's how we that's how we ended up here, man. That's excusing. Oh, I lost my mind. All right, I'm gonna help them out. <laughs> Chef Rome was a guest on Horizons almost a year ago. Mind my own business. He had just released his new cookbook, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the um, show, called Carolina Soul: The Down Home Taste of the Carolinas. Oh, that's the name of it. I thought it was Old People Can Cook Too. Oh, <laughs> my bad. My bad. That's a good one. Oh. So he had just released this book, and so he came onto Horizons to talk about the book. And Chef Dell was a viewer, right? And then it went from there. Yeah. In all honesty, uh, in all honesty, he said, "I want to be like that when I finally grow up." You know what? <laughs> you try and say something good about a guy, and then what, he, what he come up with, you know. So I'm gonna keep my little comment to myself. And y'all don't need to know how I met him. I don't even like him. <laughs> but he is my opponent for the weekend, and I brought him down here to, to whoop him. <laughs> and that's what it is. That's how I know him. Well, and on that note, we're going to take another quick break. And when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about the NOLA versus um, Carolina chef battle. And then if the audience, if you, have, if you all have questions, you are surely welcome to jump in there. You don't have to come on camera to ask your question. <laughs> all right. So we'll be right... Oh my goodness. Okay. Right? I'm good now. I'm good. That part, he could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will be right back. So don't forget, as usual, to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Keep those questions coming in. And keep that watch party going because it's blowing up. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> What's up y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. And can you believe that it has been one year since Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions hit your airwaves? We have interviewed authors, entrepreneurs, playwrights, musicians, and everyone in between, all to bring you the best in literary conversation. And we plan to do it again this year, but only better. So join us right here in the Literary Lounge each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. See you there. Dale, listen, listen. I hear you've been talking, man. I hear you've been talking. When you see me down here in the Big Easy with the whole 504 behind me, it's on, Chef Rome. Hey, New Orleans, get ready for the NOLA versus Carolina chef battle. I'll be your host boy, Wild Wayne. It's going down Saturday, December 29th, 4 to 7 p.m. It's going to be between Chef Jerome Brown, as seen on the Food Network, and Chef Wendell Randall, known as Chef Dell 504. It'll be at the Treme Hideaway, 1234 North Claiborne, right off of Esplanade. You can get VIP and regular tickets at eventbrite.com, sponsored by P.I. As a seafood, Rouse's Market, Exquisite Diamond Transportation, and Winter Vacation Resorts. For more info, call 504 5894.
fun talking while the chefs are plating up food the for. <laughs> we are having a good time here on Horizons. I'm your host, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. This is Chef Dale 504 and Chef Jerome Brown, also known as Chef Rome. Now, this is this is going to be a really great battle. I mean, because before they started going back and forth, they actually um, Dale was actually going to give Chef Rome some props and let him know that he was um, like a mentor to him you, you, ever since they met on my show, right? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I they can were, agree, yeah. Yeah, okay, as long as you can agree. <laughs> I just say the more I teach him, the dumber I Service. get. <laughs> <laughs> can I put some salt? This yeah. is beautiful. He, look, Every plate food. looked like the last plate, which is what I'm loving right now. Service. You sure ain't giving nobody enough. <laughs> can't, you, can't you get some chicken on here, man? So, now, the Nola versus Chef Battle, um, the Nola versus Carolina Chef Battle is happening on Saturday at 4 p.m. at the Treme Hideaway here in New Orleans, Louisiana. So, if you are in the area, you really need to be there. If you're in the city of New Orleans or if you are in Carolina and you're coming down to see the Carolina and Saints game on Sunday, you should come a little early and come to this battle. If you're coming for your New Year's Eve, I know there's a lot of people coming for New Year's Eve. This is the place to be. We want to see you at the Treme Hideaway at 4 p.m. on December 29th. So, y'all have any tricks up your sleeves for this battle? I mean, nothing I'm willing to share, but oh yeah, I got a couple of them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I really don't need much of a trick. You know what I mean? It ain't tricking if you got it, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just. Now, um, we do have one of our sponsors in the house. Um, we have Rachel here from um, Piazza Seafood, and Piazza Seafood is actually sponsoring um, some of the dishes that are going to be in the battle. Okay. All right, excellent. I mean, I, I think that's um, um, we're we're privileged to have them as a sponsor, and we are definitely going to make some magic with whatever they send our way. Okay. It's going to be pure magical. That's what I'm talking about. Now, the other really cool part about it is is that they are giving um, two different things. They're going to give shrimp, and they're going to give some type of fish, but they're not telling you what type of fish it is. I mean, are there different ways that you can cook certain fish? Absolutely. Yes, there's different techniques of uh, fabricating that's mm -hmm. filleting the fish. So when it comes from a round fish to a flat fish, mm -hmm. um, different types of seafood have different ways of even preparing them before you can start cooking them. Uh, the, the, the meat texture is different. Some are flaky, some are very meaty, um, some are good cooked, some are good raw. So it's a, it's a toss up of, of what we will actually be doing. Mm -hmm. With these, uh, with the seafood, so you know, it's gonna be very interesting. And then by being a, a, a tailgate battle, and we're using outside equipment, tailgate mm -hmm. equipment. Myself and Chef Ron, we both uh, prior service military, so we're kind of used to cooking with some offbeat equipment, you know, like burners and uh, propane and different types of uh, food cooking utensils. So um, I think it's going to be interesting, you know, and then we're going to show that you can actually make a gourmet type meal, a, a nice presentation of right. a meal with this equipment. So And you don't have to be um, a professional chef in order to be able to do it. So you're going to show them how to. I mean, you got to be a professional chef to run up on me. You gotta and that's what makes, right. that's what the surprise, I'm, I'm just surprised sure, not, that he would call me, that he would actually call me out like I wasn't going to show up. I'm mm. here. Mm. So yeah, so you you did you definitely should have been a professional before you ran up this tree. Listen, <laughs> everybody down here in New Orleans know that I ain't no pushover. Now this guy, you know, he's been seasoned very well, <laughs> extra just... well, like just a lot of seasoning. Like, you know, you know, people are old; they call him seasoned. He's seasoned. <laughs> Like a bunch of seasoning. <laughs> That's all right. You know, I'm coming with some tricks. I'm coming with this new flavor that Chef Dell been working on. And whatever is given to me, I'm going to make magic out of it. And so 
He can say what he want. He can think he coming to a, a, a practice bout, but this is going to be the main event. So I hope he understand and take this seriously because <laughs> this guy is. So, Chef Rome, what is, what is Chef Dell coming up on? I mean, what are some... What are some different places you've been? You've been, I know we had you on Sister Circle Live a few months yeah. ago, mm -hmm. and I loved, I loved that segment, and Kwai loved it too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just gonna put that out yeah, there? I did, I did. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah, so I have a, um, like, like you said, I have a rich background in terms of, you know, from a television standpoint, of course, the Food Networks, Extreme Chef, mm -hmm. um, I Village Live from NBC, um, ESPN, I, I Got Skills. I mean, the list goes on, and when you're talking about doing the, I know, I know, I know, get it out your system now. <laughs> but, but it's, but at the end of the day, I still respect him as an opponent, right? I still respect him as as an opponent, and at the, you know, when it's all said and done, he shouldn't have ran out here. So now I'm gonna give it to him. Okay, now in fairness, Chef Dell, you're not a pushover. How was my opponent? <laughs> That's all I got. Well, you, oh, you you've, done, man now? you've done quite a few things as well in your in your cooking career, in your chef career. So, what are some things that you've done? Um, I, I, I did culinary school in what 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Disney, did an uh, internship. Um, I've been cooking. I, I've been cooking around the country. I've done. Uh, casinos, cruise ships. I actually did the Norwegian Cruise Line America. Did a Hawaiian tour. Um, I've actually, I was a show cook for the New Orleans Saints. Big up to the Saints, you know, uh, 504. <laughs> uh, I did a, a huge crawfish ball in uh, Lawrence, Kansas, with the University of Kansas football team. So I've, I've been around. I've done a couple things, and you know, all of this stuff wasn't in no real. Super duper uh, luxurious kitchen, you know. Uh, being in the military, I was out in the field uh, doing Philly cheese steaks on an MKT. Uh, What's an so MKT? I do a mobile kitchen trailer. There we go. So you know, I do I do what I do. Okay. And he need to respect what I do, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna show this guy that he need to respect what I do. <laughs> I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of talking. I'm, I'm about to just walk off this interview. I don't want to talk no more. Get, get back in the. In Basically, that means. I don't want to talk no more. Basically, that means he ran out. He fresh out. I ain't going oh, that is. I ain't even tapped into all oh, mine. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are hilarious. Listen, uh, at, come Saturday, ain't no more smiling. All the jokes aside, mm -hmm. it's a serious battle. I'm All right, nice it smiling, is. Though. It is serious. Oh, oh, you cracking up? <laughs> <laughs> you see my face? You see my little face? <laughs> I'm laughing at you. Oh goodness! <laughs> hey, hey, so I laugh. <laughs> okay, now what can people expect? Now we have three different tickets for the chef battle. We have the VIP ticket. That's where people can actually get. Um, closer to the chefs, they're going to do a lot more interacting with the chefs while you guys are cooking. Um, you may go up to them and like, hey, taste this and let me know how it tastes. You know, you know, do what you do, you know. Stay on this side with that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they're also going to get gift bags. So um, there, there are going to be some things. And we've, we've actually gotten some donations from the New Orleans Saints. Um, we've gotten a donation from Wyndham Vacation Resorts. So um, we got have a donation a, from myself. Yes, yes, yep. and you've mm -hmm. donated a few things as well. Yep. So we're going to have <clears throat> gift bags as well as. No, but I'm fixing. He got a little, 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 piece, little. Of, little piece of defeat on his face. <laughs> we're going to have gift bags as well as door prizes, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> now that's um, VIP. Now we also have the general admission tickets. General admission. You actually still get access to some of the door prizes. Um, you just won't get a gift bag. And um, you'll be able to, you know, get in where you fit in. But you're still going to have a good time. And you're still going to be able to taste something from the chefs. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're actually going to put it, put on a whole other meal ahead of time. Right? And we're going to prepare what we prepare for the judges. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the audience will actually get a, get a chance to sample something totally different that we're both going to prepare. And that's going to be the last positive moment between us until after the battle. Okay. Period. Got it. Yeah. <clears throat> and I also, on that, on that buffet of food, I have a couple surprises. 
uh -oh. that'll be coming also. So you, you're going to come and get full. It won't be a bunch of samples and you leave hungry or whatever. You can actually come to this event and eat during the battle, before the battle, you know. So it, it will be a good event to come to and actually get full. You won't just get your palates tickled. Yeah. Up, you, know. you know how sometimes you go some places and they give you a little bitty Petri dish of some food. You're going to actually be able to taste the food <laughs> and have a good time. Right. And then there might be some people, maybe you already ate before you came. Maybe you're on a diet. Big mistake. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you, you know, maybe you just don't want to taste what other people. I don't know what's wrong with you if you don't want to eat. But I'm just saying there are going to be some people who may want to come and just watch the battle and they don't want to eat. For people like that, we also have a $20 entertainment only ticket. Just come and have a good time. Experience the battle. Meet Wild Wayne, a couple of other surprise guests. And... Just have a good time. So we have tickets for you guys as well. Yeah, if you're full of allergies and stuff like that, you get that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he in rare form tonight. He is very much in rare form. Oh, man. And we also, um, one of the special guests we're going to have, I can't tell you everybody, but one special guest that we're going to have is Mrs. Louisiana Universal 2019 is coming. Uh, yes. Coming to see me, huh? Oh, yeah. She's coming just to see you. Okay, well. <laughs> now, we did have a question from Miss Felicity Ross. She wanted to know where... Oh, she has two questions. First, she wanted to know how much heavy cream. Is it based on your taste or is it based on sight? Is there a measurement? How much heavy cream do you put into this? What's her name? Felicity. So, Felicity? It's Felicity Ross, see? Felicity. Okay, that's a different name. All right. Um, so the heavy cream depends on you. Um, really, it depends on you. If you're if you're watching your weight and you want a little less or none at all, you don't have to put in that at all. We added it to balance out all of it together, right, and give it that smooth finish. Um, however, uh, we will start off with a half a pint. Half a pint is more than enough for the amount that we made. So we made like a, a pretty large skillet, uh, 12 inch surround skillet. So about a half a pint of uh, heavy cream was uh, more than enough. Okay, now she also asked, where can she get this recipe? Do you have a website where she can receive, retrieve the recipe because it looks delicious? You supposed to have been writing this down as we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We will make sure that you have the recipe. Uh, it's Chef Wendu's recipe, uh, kind of. And... Um, but he will make sure that you get the recipe and it'll show up on the website, all right? And another thing with this recipe, it's one of those recipes the way you can almost freestyle it. You know, you use all of the ingredients that we said and you get you some plastic spoons or spoons that if you're eating it yourself, you just get you a spoon and you taste as you go. You have enough sauce and then you add your heavy cream and if it's not to your liking, then add a little bit more. If not, add a little more sauce until you get it perfect the way you want it. It's one of those, it's one of the, and vodka. Yeah, yeah vodka, so, don't forget the vodka. It's one of those recipes to where you can tweak it and it, it's not one of those uh, recipes the way you need exact measurements and it won't work or it, it'll blow up or something like that. That's more with bacon, but this recipe right here, you can freestyle it. Now, listening to him, you're going to end up with a 15-gallon pot. So we're going to give you a more accurate <laughs> recipe before it's all said and done, all right? <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Okay, now, do we have any questions from the audience? I mean, it could be any question at all. Maybe you want a, a cooking recipe like cooking eggs. How do you make your eggs fluffy? You know, when you make a scrambled <laughs> eggs. I don't know. Dishes to make while doing keto. First of all, let me say this about keto. Uh -oh. <clears throat> keto is not a diet for everybody. It's not a blanket diet. So before you start any diet, check with your doctor first to see what they recommend. Um, I, took, I actually prepared meals for people on a diet of some sort based on their blood type. So what may work for you may not work for me. Mm -hmm. So if you, if I, for example, I'm a positive blood. So by all accounts, I should be a vegetarian. Why? Because I don't have enough stomach acid to break down things the way, say, a type O or even a type B. Right. Wow. So, so when you talk about these different diets, you have to really 
check with your doctor first to make sure that that's an appropriate diet for you. Well, I never thought about that. Your blood type can determine the type of diet that Keep you playing. take. Keep playing. Yeah. You, you know what? what? You, you know, know what? what? You know what? This battle here don't have nothing to do with no diet. All right. All right. Okay. So you, you could be fancy and sound you. like you know all of this. I do. Like that. I'm just telling you, I, I, I do. I, I, gentlemen, gentlemen. I, listen, that, that's that heat. I told him I bring that heat. Hey, I know when I went to the back to the kitchen, I stand heat. He probably stage these questions so he can sound all smart and all this shit. And it's okay. I don't even know this lady. Does anybody else have a question? Okay, here's another question from the audience. Oh, I thought you had a question. Okay, well. You stop my rant. He's going to get the smoke. Oh my God! <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay. To both chefs, whoever wants wants to answer. When you guys battle Saturday night, how good is the food going to be? Uh oh. Better than his. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got. That's what I got to do to win. Short it got to be better <clears throat> than his. However, good. Awesome, excellent. I'm gonna be a step higher. Chef, though, why don't you tell him about your visit to Piazza? Yeah, he don't even need to know about all that. Right. What's going on? First of all, <laughs> I'm in. A, I've been in the lab. First I've been all, training like right. Exactly. He been in the lab training, <laughs> practicing, cause you know doing push -ups. He understand what he up against a little bit, but he don't really. It Mike Tyson say everybody got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Mm. So. Understand how this gonna go down. To answer your question, I'm not making anything that I've ever made before. All authentic, all signature, and I'm coming for them. So whatever the other ingredients are with the fish, I, I mean, at the end of the day, people ruined it. <laughs> it's gonna be on and popping. That's it. It's real serious. Yeah. Listen. Yeah, and we will be posting some um, video of Chef Dell's visit to Piazza Seafood. Um, he got a tour of the <laughs> freezer. He was able to <laughs> fillet you know some what? fish. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> See? No, no, no. No. So here's the thing. He lives here. So he already got the host down packed in his back pocket. I heard that interview. Uh-oh. Who said he wasn't. He, he, was, he was biased, but he didn't care. You already got a head start on the on the supplier for the seafood, so now we know it's a seafood battle. What's gonna be your excuse? Uh oh. When it's over with, that's all I want to know. Think about that. You, it's rhetorical. Yeah, I, I, I didn't write an excuse. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. You don't have. That. <laughs> I know. Get practice it up. Practice now, it up. Tomorrow. <laughs> We will be visiting another one of our um, sponsors. We're going over to Rouse's Market, where the chefs are going to be shopping for more supplies. What you looking at, man? My opponent. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you would like to come see them, see that happen in person, we will be at the Rouse's Market on Carrollton Avenue. This is a beautiful, beautiful market. Um, Rouse's has been so gracious to um, donate money so they can go in, get the shopping that they need to get done, and it's going to be on. Absolutely. Right after we leave Dookie Chase, because I oh. can't shop hungry. Oh, yeah, please don't <laughs> shop. You're not supposed to shop hungry. I mean, that's a real thing. Don't shop hungry, right? Tomorrow we'll get an opportunity to meet the great Leah Chase. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I was looking forward to while I came here to uh, New Orleans. I mean, the richness, one of the things, all jokes aside, one of the things I love about Louisiana, but especially New Orleans, the amount of tremendous chefs that are concentrated in one area is ridiculous. True. And I literally travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. I, I do. And, I, and I've had great food from other chefs often. However, there's no place like Louisiana. That's the real reason why I accepted this challenge. Now, I knew I was going to win when I accepted it. It's like a great attorney. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. don't take the case if you don't know you're going to win. <laughs> I already know that. But I definitely wanted to come down here and get some of this wonderful, rich food from these different chefs. And Leah Chase, I'm just looking forward to seeing her. I'm looking forward to going to all our other sponsors and, and just, you know, taking it all in while I'm here. 
Awesome. And awesome. then I'm coming to see you when I <laughs> Damn, absorb that. Home. All right. <laughs> and, back with you. and on that note, <laughs> I can't believe it, but we have actually come to the end of the show. You didn't talk the whole show. Man, that jealousy is real. I hear it. I hear it. That jealousy so is real. All, all jokes aside, we have two chefs who obviously respect each other. They're just having a great time and they want to have a great time with you. So make sure that you come out Saturday evening at 4 p.m. at the Treme Hideaway, December 29th. It's going to be great. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to have door prizes. We're going to have gift bags. We're going to have fun. And we want to see you there. A lot of fun. Rain or shine, people. Rain or shine. This event is going down at 4 p.m. at the Treme Hideaway. So I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, special thanks to Rachel from Piazza Seafood for coming out. Um, Rouse's Market, we want to thank you guys as well. We want to thank Exquisite Diamond Transportation for your support and for Wyndham Vacation Resorts for all that you've done. We want to thank Chef Rome for um, donating some books that we are going to be uh, raffling <coughs> off. Make sure that you pick up Carolina Soul, ah, the down-home taste of the Carolinas. This is a great book. I mean, these recipes in here are beautiful. And the foreword, written by none other than Gina Neely herself. So he's the real deal. Y'all better tell him. <laughs> <laughs> How much time we got left? A few seconds. Do it. Hey, um, another thing. In this battle, we're both going to have sous chefs, and they're actually going to be active duty military soldiers. Absolutely. School service specialists, because they're not cooking them more like this old dude over here. It's going to be a great time. You know, come out, support these guys. to show. We're here to show them that, you know, there's things outside of the military for when they get out to where they can do what myself and Chef Rome has done, and it's just gonna be an awesome event. I just had to give a shout out to those active duty soldiers. Fort Polk! Out. Fort Polk, we come and see y'all this Friday. All right, and with that note, thank you once again, Chef Dale 504. Thank you so much. I am so looking forward to seeing you do what you do. Right. Chef Rome, you know, it's, I'm, it's always a pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do. All right, now can you two shake hands? No. Oh, I tried, y'all. <laughs> No. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Y'all, I hope you had no. a wonderful Christmas. No. And you all have a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful New Year. And we will see you in 2019. But first, we're going to see you Saturday at Tremaine Hideaway at 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, all. Good night. Are y'all supposed to shake hands? It's supposed to be the end. I ain't shaking nothing, so. man. <laughs> right. Dale, listen, listen. I hear you've been talking, man. I hear you've been talking. When you see me down here in the Big Easy with the whole 504 behind me, it's on, Chef Rome. Hey, New Orleans, get ready for the NOLA versus Carolina chef battle. I'll be your host boy, Wild Wayne. It's going down Saturday, December 29th, 4 to 7 p.m. It's going to be between Chef Jerome Brown, as seen on the Food Network, and Chef Wendell Randall, known as Chef Dell 504. It'll be at the Treme Hideaway, 1234 North Claiborne, right off of Esplanade. You can get VIP and regular tickets at eventbrite.com. Sponsored by Piazza Seafood, Rouse's Market, Exquisite Diamond Transportation, and Wyndham Vacation Resorts. For more info, call 504-5894.